The department also has a very aging information systems technology infrastructure. It is 1950s vintage in many cases, so we're talking about half a century old. You also have governance and stakeholder management. The department's governor, governance structure is difficult at best. Um, you have politics that come into play. It's a city agency. And uh, we've gotten to experience pol politics in the last few weeks. And it's very different than what you experience in just a conventional business. There are definitely issues of mutual trust. Um, and uh, it's also been made more difficult, um, as the controller mentioned, because of the number of general managers. Uh, it's been described to us in the interviews that it's a revolving door job. I forget the exact number. 11 general managers in the last 15 and a half years. Why is that? That's the political structure of how this nation's largest water and power public corporation is run. Um, a mayor gets elected, a mayor appoints a commission, a mayor and commission appoint a general manager. Um, so, and we've had quite a number of general managers who don't necessarily come from a water or power or experience with running a large complex organization background. Okay. Um, the, the report very much points out, uh, but in a realistic way, uh, that the entire governance of this department needs to be re-examined. It's very difficult to, one, develop a strategic plan, to execute on that strategic plan and then track performance if you don't have consistency in management. The department hasn't had consistent management and that's one of the things that really needs to change over time. The department also has a very ingrained culture of ways of working um, that have been going on for a very, very long time. And one of the things we discuss here is there really does need to be a cultural transformation for the department to be able to meet the challenges that we've talked about. We believe that the efforts to ensure the recommendations contained within this survey are pursued is absolutely critical. Very little of the 2002 recommendations were actually um, addressed successfully and acted upon. We think the issues now are even more serious than they were in 2002. The department has a culture that has not historically embraced cost management or complex and consolidated project prioritization. Addressing those and changing those issues, we believe, is absolutely essential. We've said that the department is at a transformational point in its history. How it deals with these issues that we've discussed today will shape the future of Los Angeles <coughs> and significantly impact the city's financial health. We also want to be clear, since it's been in the media so much, PA stands behind its assessment of Solar Measure B, all of the findings, and given the context it was intended for and the time allowed for the study. As Laura talked about, we are, en we are experts in energy markets and utility operations. Um, the shift to renewable generation is going to um, dramatically increase cost, it could dramatically increase cost. It has cost implications. Your question is, how much? Yes. It absolutely depends on the choices the department makes. So if the department decides to meet its renewable needs through the lowest cost renewable alternatives, uh, wind, biomass, etc., increasing its use of natural gas generation, the cost will be less. If it has a mix that's much more heavily focused on solar, the cost will be dramatically higher by technology. And right now, even in this region where we have lots and lots of sun, solar is the most expensive technology. Economies of scale right now are not driving solar prices down very dramatically. And it's unclear as to how quickly cost savings will be passed on by manufacturers. We modeled the world using prices today, projects today, and the technology that we bought would actually be deployable in the most economic way. In the Huron report, they assume a much more favorable uh, economic climate. 
and a much more favorable uh, technology set of assumptions than what we have. So I'd say we were conservative in how we think the market will develop and based it on information that's absolutely available today. I think Huron developed models to project what the future might be and based its numbers on that. We would characterize the PA analysis as conservative and based on prices that we see in the market today. Uh, yeah, what happens next is uh, up for grabs. Okay? What I've seen, I'm sorry to tell you, in response to other IEA reports, including, as I mentioned, the DWP report of 2002, is uh, they cost a lot of money. Uh, they're high quality. They are putting out to the decision makers in this city, uh, starting with the elected officials and the appointed commissioners, and uh, a lot of serious issues, and they collect dust. Uh, this, this report calls that out and says, someone should be in charge. This should be heard on a quarterly basis, I think is the recommendation. It should be tracked. It should be, you know, in my opinion, online for everyone to see. You don't make progress if you don't have a plan and then someone in charge to implement and follow it. And that's one of the screening recommendations. How about a plan instead of project by project? 